So I had grown up in the Nigerian education system and realized that um, even as I saw my experiences, the differences in my private education and um, the education of, of even family members that I had who didn't get access to a private education, um, the, the level of skills that we got access to were very different and as a result of that the level of work opportunities after graduating were also very different. Um, so I'd, I'd been keenly aware of the differences in the education system, um, both public and private, within Nigeria, and also when I left Nigeria to study abroad. Um, so moved back to Nigeria in about 2010 um, and spent some time actually working in Nigeria and realizing that the gaps were affecting the employment system years down the line and that we were struggling to find good staff good employees. We would interview people who would graduated from university and their skill levels were still also very low. So then the wheels started turning in my head and that was before I went to business school. The wheels started turning that on any given day you have employers who are desperately seeking talent but you also have young people who are desperately seeking work and there's a mismatch in there and it's because the skills that the supply system, the school system, is churning out are very different from the skills that the employment system is looking for. And so when I went into business schools, met other West Africans who are also passionate about this problem of youth unemployment and how it links very closely with the education system, but also links closely with the employment system. And we started working on an idea um, based off of that. So some sort of the motivations came from my experiences living out the system and seeing the inequalities and the gaps and the effects of this further down the line, not just for each individual, but for the economy as a whole where you now have Africa thinking about the youth unemployment problem as opposed to the youth opportunity and seeing young people as the assets and the potential dividends demographically as opposed to liabilities. <laughs> That's a tough one. Um, I think a lot of us have come to agreement in this space that um, critically are the skills um, and it's not just the hard skills the soft skills actually matter more if not yeah actually matter more um, and those are the skills that allow young people to think critically to learn and unlearn and relearn throughout their lives because the skills that you need today in terms of the hard skills the technical skills today will be very different in five ten years um, and so what's most important is that ability to continue to learn throughout life um, life-wide learning lifelong learning um, and so for us, those skills are you know, problem-solving abilities, critical thinking abilities, decision-making abilities, effective communication, um, working well with others collaboratively, um, managing yourself, managing your emotions. Um, those are skills that employers continue to value um, years down the line, even as machine and artificial learning start to catch up and replace a lot of jobs, the newer jobs that will continue to exist, um, or that will exist, and, and the jobs that will continue to be, to be important are jobs that will require this emotional intelligence, will require these soft skills. Um, and so those are um, the things that we focus on at WAVE and that we believe put young people on the path to continue to grow and learn um, as the 21st century world, world of work continues to evolve. In Nigeria, where I'm from, I think we have one of the highest rates of youth entrepreneurship. A lot of young people are bursting with ideas and bursting with energy to carry out those ideas. I think a lot of times um, they lack the skills required to actually launch and grow their businesses. So you can have a great idea, but executing the idea is the harder piece of the work. Building an organization, recruiting talent, um, raising financing, putting in place the frameworks legally and operationally to make sure that your business is, is on the right side of policy and of the law. Um, and so I think a lot of that is, is com it comes from education. 
So even in my entrepreneurial journey, a lot of the things I have learned have been through incubator fellowship programs where I've met other entrepreneurs, where I've been exposed to other skill sets, not just what I learned in school, um, for example. So that hands-on experiential learning for entrepreneurs is really important. Um, we talk a lot about conducive policies to enable young entrepreneurs, whether young or old, um, to actually register their businesses quicker. Um, I remember um, setting up WAVE, the formal paperwork took us about a year and a half to get. Um, in that time, we needed to operate, we needed to collect revenues, we needed to spend cash, and even just to open a bank account, you needed the legal documents to do that. And so finding creative ways to work around the system um, was something that we were able to do, but it is a challenge for a lot of entrepreneurs who don't know how to work uh, um, with the system or around the system and so those policies around enabling people register their businesses even quicker um, will then allow them to get access to financing will then allow them to build the team that they require so I'd say a lot of it is still down to education but maybe I'm just biased in the importance of the education system um, both for people who are going into formal employment but also for people who are trying to launch um, their businesses mm -hmm.